Free Heal Lifers, welcome back. Uh, today I am going to do an awesome video that I know a lot of people have wanted to know about and we're going to be talking everything you've ever wanted to know about a Telemark Kids setup. So this is something that's super important because if we don't teach young people how to Telemark ski, eventually it's going to disappear, right? Like for real, like the dinosaurs, like it's going to go away. But I think uh, it's really important that we understand how we get younger people into Telemark. Now, teenage kids, uh, you know, people that can fit adult sizes, not so difficult. You know, everything's out there. We can touch a little bit on that. But I specifically wanted to talk about uh, equipment that can be used for young, young kids to get into Telemark. So my background with doing uh, youth programs and stuff like that, I have done, not, not in recent years, but years ago, I was the coach of a program that was at the Canyons Resort here in Utah. And uh, that I guess that was prior to Park City purchasing it. So it's the Canyon side of the Park City Resort now. But anyways, we had a really good uh, Tele Tribe was what it was called. And we had kids as young as like eight and 10. So those are the folks I'm talking about. These young kids that are psyched. They look at Telemark, they think it looks cool. Maybe mom and dad do it. Uh, maybe they see it on the hill. And we wanna be able to encourage them to do that. So before I hop into the gear, I just wanna say a little bit about that is a lot of people think Telemark something you do as you get older. You know, it's hard to do, so why would you teach a young person? I kind of found that in my experiences doing uh, not only the Tele Tribe thing back in the mid 2000s, but also uh, Alta Youth Telemark had a program and also seeing other youth programs around the country in the United States. It's actually pretty cool for young kids because they get on, they have a lot of mobility, they're able to move around and sort of, uh, have that Nordic ability to walk around and they can parallel turn. They can also learn the telemark turn. It just has all of the advantages. And I think if anything, kids are a perfect example of, you put them on free heel equipment and they're able to learn all of the techniques. And that's really what it is. If you've watched uh, any of my other videos or listened to my podcast, uh, you know that my whole philosophy is that telemark is truly a downhill Nordic technique, right? So uh, a young kid, they really don't know the difference and they're able to learn both a parallel technique and also a telemark technique all on the same equipment. So I actually think as a young person, like many things, it's easy to hop into it when you're young because you kind of don't know any different and you just learn how the different techniques work on the same equipment. So Let's hop into the gear. This is the most exciting part and I kind of want to show you uh, boots, skis, bindings, how you can also put together uh, a kid's setup that might work for one of your little ones or maybe you want to start a kid's program where you live and uh, this is a good start. So I want to hop into this and kind of talk about what these boots look like. So there is in fact a kid's Telemark boot. Okay, now this one is called the Teledactyl. You can recognize it. One, it's made by Garmont. You'll see the stamp right here on the side. It's uh, orange, it's kind of hard to miss. And the Teledactyl was made many, many years ago. So if you're familiar with Garmont, Garmont uh, was in the Telemark boot industry for many, many years. And they moved on and actually uh, sold the molds to Scott. So we'll talk a little bit about that. But the Teledactyl, you'll still see these floating around and uh, they're definitely worth grabbing up because they're hard to find. So the cool thing about an actual specific kid's Telemark boot is the flex of the bellow is very, very soft. And this makes it really easy as we get into the, the binding combinations and the ski combinations about what you can use. It's a 75 millimeter toe. It does have three pin holes and uh, works with a lot of bindings. Uh, it does have a heel groove as well. And that's important because if we do go with a cable binding, uh, that's an option, but you do have the ability to go with a three pin. It's a simple two buckle design and it uh, actually does not have a ski walk mode on the back. It's just got kind of a free, free floating cuff. 
So if you're familiar with the Garmont excursion or the Scott excursion, which was the adult version of this boot, uh, you'll, you'll be familiar with kind of the setup on it. So the cool part of, uh, about this boot is really just the softness that you're going to get. And the last and probably the most important thing is this goes down to a size 19 Mondo. So in U.S. sizes, this is a kid's 13 shoe, okay? So uh, you can't find any of the adult size boots that go below a 22 Mondo. And so this kind of fills that gap of 19, uh, 20, and 21. And that's kind of what's really cool about that. Now, if you can't find a Teledactyl floating out there, on the internet somewhere, you may come across what's called the G-Rex. The G-Rex is actually uh, the Gar Garmont, when they sold to uh, Scott, they sold in the molds for the kids' boots and you ended up with the G-Rex. So very similar construction. You'll notice it's got the Scott logo on here, but really it's the same boot. Uh, it might be, this one actually might be a little bit stiffer I don't really have a flex rating on these, but uh, it's soft enough for kids to flex, okay? Two buckle, same thing on the back. It doesn't have a, a walk mechanism that locks into ski or, or walk mode. It just has a free floating cuff, which is really nice. And also, this is actually a Mondo 19. This is a, a Mondo 19 and the Teledactyl. You can see it's pretty much the same boot. I will, uh, I do want to call out one little distinct difference that you may not notice but could come into play is actually the Teledactyl has a thinner sole on this because there was actually a uh, Rotafella made a, uh, a cable binding that had a kid's junior size for the duckbill in this era. So that is one distinct difference of it. It can be used. This can, it might have a little bit of slop in some of the cable bindings that I'll show you, but you'll notice that this is actually a thicker uh, toe in terms of that. Still both 75 millimeter width, but you're gonna have that. So if you're looking to get into small kids boots, it's an amazing option if you can find it. The Garmont G-Rex, this one, or I'm sorry, I just said Garmont, but Scott, same thing. There are G-Rexes that were after the Teledactyl by Garmont, but a lot of the newer ones you're gonna find are Scott. These were manufactured up until a couple years ago, uh, and we actually carried them in our, in our retail shop, and you can find them out there floating around. The ones that are really good to get are especially those 19, uh, 20 Mondo, just having a smaller boot for those kids that need a small, soft boot. Now, a lot of people may be thinking, well, if I, if I can't find one of these boots, can I get a good setup for kids? And the answer is 100% yes. So a couple options I was going to bring up. I've got a couple Scarpa boots that I want to show you that you can get into size uh, 21.5. And remember, uh, if, if you haven't watched how to size Scarpa boots, uh, you can watch the video about that that we have where it talks about the half size is where the new shell size starts. So 21.5 and 22 are the same shell size. So the first boot I want to show you is this simple Scarpa T2X. Uh, again, it's a 75 millimeter boot, three pin holes. Also, this plastic is fairly soft. You're going to notice the biggest thing is it's got three buckles and a taller cuff. And the, the hardest part about this versus something like this is you're going to notice the cuff height and the extra buckle could create a dilemma for a smaller kid that doesn't have the ability to flex the front of the boot. But if you start, and also weight's also an issue. So if you're light, you know, you're a smaller kid and you're, and you're light, it's going to be harder to flex the upper part of the boot. So you just kind of have to use some discretion when you're putting these setups together. Uh, but these, these are a great option, is the T2X, uh, it's called the T2 Eco now, same exact boot for the most part. Um, it does have a ski walk mechanism back here, 
So, uh, you know, as I showed you on the on the Garmont boot and the Teledactyl and, and the Scott G Rex, I'm going to mix those up the whole time. They have that free floating cuff. You could do that with a kid with a T2X and make it so that the cuff moves more freely and give it uh, some additional motion. Uh, but we want to keep it soft in the bellow, and these work really well for that. Another uh, option, and there's a lot of these floating around because this is a, a version of the T2. Two buckle, it's got a power strap on top. Very simple boot, very simple ski walk mechanism in the back as well that can go up and down. And this is something you can find all over, you know, Craigslist, eBay, online. We sell tons of used ones. Um, and honestly, we get we find a, a lot of times the smaller boots don't sell because people just there's, it doesn't have as high a resale value. But this is a great option for young kids. So uh, this is how you can get someone into Telemark, get the sizes. And like I said, Mondo 19, which is kids 13. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Mondo 19 is a U.S. kids 13. Uh, you only have 19, 20, 21 that you really have to gap. And then you're getting into these other boots. And that's really where you can start putting these setups together. So once you get the boot figured out, you find something that works, uh, then you can move on to the bindings. Okay, so we're going to start off with the simplest of all Telemark bindings, which is a three-pin binding. And you might be thinking, Josh, that's like so old school. There's no cable. How could a kid possibly use that binding? But you'd be, you'd be surprised. I mean, this is one of the cheapest and easiest bindings to put on a Telemark uh, setup for a young kid. And it's actually one of the easiest because there's no spring cable tension holding them down. It's neutral. It lets them walk around. It, you can still make an, a good parallel turn on it, but it allows them to have that free heel experience and sort of start understanding the mechanics of not having their heel attached and being able to make telemark turns. So this particular uh, three pin binding is put on, this was actually, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the skis here in a second, but it was on an old K2 small world, which was a ski that K2 made for kids uh, that were telemark skiing. So that's a, a whole nother history lesson on, on people that were making skis for kids to telemark on. But suffice it to say, Simple binding, easy to get into, easy to mount yourself. It's literally three holes up on the front. You'll notice this one's not using a riser at all, and it's got a simple heel pad, and uh, that makes it super easy. Then we've got stuff like this. And this is actually a, a Rotofella binding called the Cobra, and this Cobra had a... Uh, a toe plate that allowed you to use a longer cable and they made this so that you could actually adjust it on the front. So this was like good for demos and rentals and kids. So if you got a growing kid and you can find one of these, we've got a lot of them in the used parts section of the website. You can check that out. But what's really nice about this is it's a simple floppy cable. Okay. Very neutral, easy to get into and uh, uses a 75 millimeter toe. Now, I will say, we talked a little bit about this thinner toe. You're going to have a lot of slop in there. I know I don't have it in the cable itself, but you can see there's actually quite a bit of movement in there. This Garmont G-Rex probably fits in here a little bit. See, that's even tight because it's a brand new boot. But you just want to check those little details out. That's something you can, you know, easily... Uh, kind of sets out. If you find it, uh, one of these older bindings and you've got the boot, you can kind of build it from there. So the thing that's nice about this three pin setup that I like is you've got the clamp and, and it's got three little sec or uh, little areas that you can clamp further down and you can take up the space that way. And uh, yeah, pretty simple binding. This one's on a riser and uh, very simple to use. One of the ones I'm not going to show is G3 Targa, which is an old binding, a little bit harder to source the parts like some of the older bindings are. But if you can find a good short cable uh, G3 Targa to use, it's fantastic for kids. Uh, it's neutral. It's easy to ski, easy to get on, easy to fix, easy to mount. 
all of these are important factors when you're putting a, a kid's setup together. And then the last one I wanted to talk about is actually a newer binding that's available on the market. And again, with any binding that you're going to get, it's always great to make sure you can get stuff that parts are easily available if you break something. Okay. So this is the 22 Designs uh, Kids Vice. Uh, it's awesome because it's got this thing we call a slick pin right here. So that actually, uh, if you have the pin further towards the toe of the binding, makes it more neutral because that's where it grabs the cable. As you put the slick pin further back, it makes it so that you have uh, what we call a more active feel. And if you don't know about active and uh, stiffness and the different activity and stiffness and the difference, you can watch this video here and that'll kind of walk you through that whole process of that. So we don't have to dive into it too deep right now. Awesome binding. Anybody who knows the 22 design stuff knows that it's built super burly, durable, doesn't break often. What they've done here is taken their really successful resort telemark binding, the vice, and then basically they've added the purple plastic up here and then the softy springs just to make it more soft. So another great binding. And what you're going to notice is I'm talking about boots and I'm talking about bindings as I say soft, neutral. These are words that we're looking for. Kids don't need to be put in the stiffest binding. We actually want them to have that ability of movement so they can use the ball of their foot. They can walk around. And again, like I said, kids don't really know any different. And it's beautiful to be able to watch how they can move and learn telemark right off the bat because it's so natural when you put them on this free heel equipment that they're going to walk around and have this free heel but we don't want to restrict the movement too much with a really stiff cable or a super active binding so you notice i held some skis up obviously and you may be thinking all right i've got the boot i got the binding how do i even find a ski what do i use well basically what i'm showing you right here with the exception of the first one we talked a little bit about the k2 small world there were companies making skis for kids uh, to telemark on, but really this this day and age, I mean, even back then, did you really need a specific ski for telemark skiing? Not really. In the era they were making these, it was the same thing for the adult version. They were taking a, a, an alpine version and putting a different top sheet. Maybe it was a little softer, but really a ski is a ski, uh, and especially for kids, we just want to make sure it's got the right features and you know, is it going to get them on the, on the snow? This particular one had a, had a twin tip design, which I think is good for kids. It's, you know, very little camber underfoot. It's just easy to slip and slide around. Again, we don't want to make this complicated. They're kids. You want to put a simple setup together, let them walk around, let them shred around with their buddies or their family or whoever they're going out with. And you want to make it simple. So that's basically what that is. That's a simple twin tip. And Another twin tip, this one, you know, a lot of times we pick up used skis and this is what we put in our rental fleet and you can do it too. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of kids that grow out of their skis and their parents take it to a secondhand shop or maybe you've got an old pair of Alpine skis from another kid that grew out of them sitting around the house. Grab those. That's all these are. This one's uh, like a 140 centimeter Rosignol Scratch BC. Honestly, Someone probably donated it or we grabbed it, slapped a binding on there, found the boot, and now we've got a rental that we can send out with uh, kids. So this one's a little bit different. This is actually not a twin tip. It's kind of a flat tail, more of a carvey, maybe maybe like a race ski. It's called the Rosignol uh, J Multi Event. Literally, no idea. I don't know the background of it. All I know is it's a kid ski. It's 110 centimeters, small, and we slapped a sweet 22 designs binding on it and you're set to go so the point being don't think about it too much if you got a ski the boot and the binding are probably the hardest thing to come by bindings are obviously easier because there's some that are, are being manufactured boots might be a little trickier and you know you want to find a way where uh you know the kid's not going to grow out of the boot or you've got someone to hand it on to uh later on but this is how easy it is to get kids into telemark skiing and get them out on the hill. 
you know, whether it's mid season, late season, early season, you know, I, I honestly think it's always a good time to get uh, out on the hill, try something new, especially, uh, you know, kids that might want to try something different. Maybe it's an option for them. Like I said, mom and dad do it, you know, brothers and sisters do it, whatever the, the catalyst is to get them thinking about it. The point of this video is to show you it's not that hard to put a setup together and get them out on the hill. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you have any questions or comments, hit them below. Be sure to like and subscribe to the video. Hit that notification bell. I'm going to be pumping out a ton of videos for the YouTube channel coming up, and I'd love for you to be a part of it. And uh, I want to be able to do more videos like this that we can serve this Free Hill Life community. And uh, I hope you're having a great week out there, and we'll see you next time.